GM and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I'm talking about launch pads. Over the course of a bull market, one of the easiest ways to make crazy gains is through launch pad investing. This is where any retail participant can get in at the ground level, basically becoming a VC and get very good deals on the upcoming latest projects. Now, during this bear market, the launchpad that has been growing, actively developing new product lines and actually delivering some serious gains is TrustSwap. And I personally believe they will be the best ROI return on investment launchpad during this next bull market. Now in this one, I wanna go through five launch pads that they've completed, take you through some details around those launch pads and also describe exactly what I'm looking for in these. So if you do enjoy this one, you appreciate this type of content, drop me a GM in the comments down below and subscribe to the channel. So the tier list is ready and so am I. Let's jump in with our first project. The A grade here is gonna be PodFast. PodFast is a recent launch from TrustSwap and its ROI thus far at max was 546%. So if you got in during the IDO phase, the token price was 1.95 cents. It went up to over 12 cents during the first month. All tokens were vested out. This means that there was no unlocks to come. All tokens were liquid upon the token generation event. And this is kind of, and this was kind of the ripping off of the band-aid, if you will, allowing this thing to have its own price discovery. Now I've given this an A grade rating. Let's jump into it. So this is PodFast and that is the chart on screen there. You can see we have the initial hype of the launch, sending it up to all time highs there. I and mean, it's been just trickling down here as of late. And I believe this is now the low 2.8 cents, a bit of a rebound with recent promotions. And since then it's around three and a half cents. So the market cap on this is just $3.5 million, which I think is highly undervalued and in just four days time on june the 30th they released their kind of soft launch for the podfast app so the actual utility is not even out yet it's coming out in four days and so i think this will be a very good catalyst for this one here is the main website of podfast now essentially this is an ai tool to speed run your learning on anything you're interested in. So whatever your niche is, your kind of hobbies, etc., what you're gonna be able to do is plug in a long form piece of content, be that maybe a YouTube video, a Spotify podcast, a Twitter spaces, whatever it is, and the AI tooling will pick out the key points for you and summarize them and give you an audio file back. So this is a real life hack in terms of cutting down your research time, making your days a lot more efficient. I mean, I like Lex Friedman, but I haven't always got three and a half hours to give to him so if I can take away the main talking points and understand what the discussion was around I could then do my own further reading around the elements that I found most appealing so this will be a desktop plugin but also a mobile app as well so this is going to be super cool and I think this crossover of AI and media is a massive industry that can be cracked there was recently an investment by Y Combinator into a short creation AI service that raised in the region of hundreds of millions of dollars and as a result I think in this AI crazy world, PodFast is gonna be highly undervalued. I just wanna show you this clip. So this is coming maybe Q3, Q4 of this year on the roadmap as I've been pestering them over on Telegram asking, when do the video images come out to go with it? Because initially what we'll get back is audio only, but Q3, Q4 video to come along with it. So that would be you download your favorite podcast episode. It condenses the highlight, but on top of just giving you an audio back of all the highlighted points, it will also give you this kind of B-roll of AI footage as well. Now, some crazy developments have been going on here. This seems to be improving on a weekly basis as the AI model gets better and better. And this is from a recent Tucker Carlson episode. You can see they've kind of shaved a few pounds off AI version of Tucker Carlson here, but I'll play this for you just to get a taste of what they can do. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. I investigated the Biden family's bank records as a member of the House Oversight Committee, and what I found was alarming. It turns out that they received over $10 million from foreign nationals and their related companies during Joe Biden's tenure as vice president and even after he left public office. So in a world where content really is king, something that can churn out a lot of content for you and potentially increase your learning bandwidth and also maybe tap into different industries, you could create your own faceless channel from this. Well, I think PodFast is gonna be a much utilized tool. We recently saw this, the Bob token, which was a AI reply bot on Twitter. It actually recently got banned by Elon Musk as it was replying to him a bit too much. 
but that reached a market cap of over $50 million there on numerous occasions. And it was literally just text AI replies. So in my mind, an AI tool with an app that condenses down your long form into short form, disseminates all the important information, and eventually towards the end of this year, we'll have audio plus image and video for us to consume as well. Well, I think this is highly undervalued here at Podfast at just $3.5 million in market cap. So that is why I have given it an A grade at this point in time, but there is a lot more to come here for Podfast. Going into this next cycle, I expect AI to perform exceptionally well. Now let's move on to a B tier listing here. So this was Yield App. This one launched back towards the end of 2020, I believe it was. And this one returned some crazy gains, 1,743% on Yield. YLD was the ticker. So let's jump into the chart on this one. So on TrustSwap Launchpad, it actually launched at seven cents. So you can see YLD is the ticker here, market cap $25 million. Now from the chart here, as I say, it launched at seven cents. So the IDO price, the TrustSwap launch price was seven cents per token. With TrustSwap, you get guaranteed allocation as well, which is pretty neat. And in terms of the vesting for this one, i.e. how do the tokens get emitted out to the IDO participants? Well, this one was on the following basis. There were three tranches of token unlocks for TrustSwap participants. One third received on the 14th of December, one third of tokens received 14th of January and one third of tokens received 14th of February. That is 2020 into 2021. And during that time period, you can see from the price chart here, the token starts like in the teens up to 20 odd cents, starts to really kick up here into the start of February. Top tick on the 16th of February there. So all tokens were vested out at that point in time, which is pretty crazy, up to $1.21. So turning seven cents into over one buck there, that was a very good, good and timely boost to the portfolio going into the bull run of 2021. In terms of yield, what I liked about this was trust what was able to see the trend that people wanted to earn yield on their crypto assets. There were some big players entering the space at this point in time. And this is where this gets super crazy because you have one of the little guys here, Yield App. They had some TradFi experience, a very solid team. They launched through TrustSwap, that small launch pad. But then you have the likes of BlockFi, Celsius, Voyager, all go under these multi-billion dollar companies. So it seems that the little guy was actually able to use better risk management and have a better structure than these huge corporations and deliver a product that actually worked. And they are still, of course, operational today. They did not blow up. So this shows you the trust swap team was able to do better due diligence than even Anthony Pompliano. <laughs> So Rocket ship, get on board. So now, quick tip, if you're not very good at maths, if you take any of these ROI percentages on screen and you deduct the last two numbers here, that would be the number of X's remaining on the left there. So if you remove the four and the three, you have a 17X gain on YLD. You remove the four and the six, that's a 5X gain on PodFast. Now let's move on to a C tier pick here. So we had this one, if you know the logo, that is from the game, play to earn game, NFT champions. It returned 10,900%, which probably can make your hair curl. Now, why is this not further up? Well, it's kind of to do with the vesting period on this one. Most of those gains came whilst we didn't have too many tokens actually given out to us. So let's jump into that one here. NFT Champs, as you can see on screen, it has now rebranded to Celestia Ultimate, and this has some high hopes ahead for it, which we'll go into in just a sec. If we just go down into the chart here, you can see this is the price chart for this one. Now, a few things to talk about. This launched at a one cent price point, and as you can see, it eclipsed $1, peak price 109, which is pretty damn crazy. This did also launch right around the time that the gaming bull run was really kicking off. So again, TrustSwap had our back here following the narrative, which is what they're good at doing and releasing a product that was prime for launch during that phase of the market cycle. Now this one launched with 20% of our tokens at the token generation event. So essentially at this price point, you had 20% of your tokens with you. There was then a two month cliff. That means there's no token releases for a further two months. And then after that, we then get an 18 month vest linearly for the remaining tokens. That means each and every day over an 18 month period, you're just getting the rest of those tokens drip fed 
to you. And this is why the chart looks like that as well. When you have these long token emission schedules like that, that means there's a constant stream of sellers. You're better off to rip off the Band-Aid and let it do its own thing because this one has just been sold, 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 sold. And what you see here is the actual vesting period comes to end, I believe it is in July of this year. So not until July will we see the end of the selling and the vesting complete. So this also brings up another point here. So what was the ROI really? Well, if you've got 100X on your tokens, but you've only got 20% of them out, say you had a $1,000 launchpad allocation, you receive 20% of those tokens. So that is essentially 200 bucks. At that point, 200 bucks for you has just changed into $20,000. So I don't really care how good of a trader you are to turn 200 bucks into $20,000 is pretty much getting to a launchpad or gambling on meme coins to get those crazy gains. Now, the question here is, can NFT champions do 100X twice? By that I mean the game was not released during the previous hype cycle and we're yet to see an actual play to earn or crypto based game actually take off and when it does I believe they will all start to really kick off here. Now NFT champs or Celestia Ultimate early access is officially live on the Epic Game Store. They've been listed onto the Epic Game Store. This is built in Unreal Engine. They've recently had a bit of an alpha release and testing phase. The NFTs which were previously on their own trading exchange have now been listed on OpenSea. This does have a lot of catalysts that makes me think that this one can still do very well from here. So even if you've gone through a bear market, you've got tokens vesting to you like I have, I haven't sold those tokens at crazy low prices. I'm waiting for the next bull run. So there is a potential that you can get a revival on some of these tokens as well and provide you with cash flow even into the next cycle. Now, next up, we do have an F tier rating. For the balance of play here, I wanted to show you one that did not do well at all. And this actually highlights the risks here. So that is down 99%. So this one was called Coin DeFi. It had a very good and novel approach. It was going to be an all-in-one DEX that is like a wallet plugin, kind of like your MetaMask. It would sit as a wallet extension browser. And from there, you could trade any crypto for any other crypto and it would plug into a load of different liquidity pools. Anyhow, this one did not do very well. Now the risks with early stage investments are very high. Crypto in itself is very high risk, but of course getting in at IDO levels is the most high risk. For some of these teams, it'll be the first launches they've ever done into crypto, and you don't really know how well they're gonna perform until it happens. We only know in hindsight. But if you just look at the numbers there, the most you can lose on any investment is 100% but the most you can make is kind of astronomical. As you can see, you could lose 100% on that one, but if you made 10,900% on that one, well, I wouldn't be crying about those losses too much. And the thing is, we don't always know exactly which projects are gonna outperform and which ones are gonna underperform. You've gotta take your chances and just play the game and allocate to all of them. That is the fun and the challenge of investing in these IDOs. So yes, big risks involved. Let's jump into Coin. It doesn't have a CoinGecko page anymore. It's been kind of delisted. This one essentially is gone and no longer operating. So if we just go into this background, Coin DeFi is a project founded by Damon Nam. Damon Nam had 16 years of experience with Microsoft and Byron Levels, the CTO, had eight years of experience with Microsoft. So when you look at it from that kind of approach, we don't know too much about the project as it launches. Well, these guys had super strong credentials, but it really didn't work out for them. As you can see on screen here, they had a load of really cool buzz points. They had an AI powered assistant. This is even before AI was hot. So some really cool attention before the, even the AI buzz was out. It was a non-custodial trading solution allowing you to trade in your wallet without them actually holding the tokens, tapping into a variety of liquidity pools using atomic swaps. It sounded really damn cool, but essentially they were unable to deliver on their promises and that is why the coin started to tank. They also got into a bit of a spat on crypto Twitter. I believe someone, a crypto personality, had the same name as them, like CoinDefi, and they were going after them legally. This is something you cannot do in crypto, and that absolutely nuked the price because you had the backlash of crypto Twitter, something all projects should take note of. You really don't mess with CT. Now, this one was a little bit before its time. Obviously, if this was launching like today, this makes a lot of sense. You have a lot of KYC issues with centralized exchanges, and there is a movement towards decentralized exchanges. All that is left pretty much of coin here is a Uniswap pool remaining. It does actually have quite a bit of liquidity in there, but the token is literally flatline dead at around three cents. Now, last but not least, we are going for an S tier. And if you know that logo, it is Opulus. Opulus returned at peak 15,000% return on investment for IDEO participants. 
pretty damn astounding. Now again, this one for me shows you that the team is able to get onto trends very early. Opulus is about music NFTs. Music NFTs didn't really have a proper hype cycle last time round, but I think it is music NFTs that will outperform a lot of things during this next cycle as they're really starting to get picked up by the mainstream with big artists, producers, and DJs getting on board with them. Opulus launched at five cents on the Trust Swap launchpad. There's the stats as it is now. It's now at seven cents, market cap 17 mil. Roughly half the tokens are circulating. Let's move down to Maxia and look at the chart. Now we did only get 10% of our tokens at TGE. There was then a four month wait until we got the next 10% of our tokens and then they vested out every other month at 10%. So a bit of a slow burn in terms of you getting your coins. And if you looked at your portfolio, those locked tokens, the ones you couldn't touch were worth a very pretty penny when it eclipsed $7.56. So at that point on the chart, you had 10% of your tokens. Say you had a 1,000 buck allocation of tokens, you received $100 worth, that just turned into $15,000. Again, unless you are a crazy good trader, you're not getting those kind of returns anywhere. Here's the Opulus website, own your music collection. This was very much before its time here. And I do believe this will have the face melter during this next market cycle. As they say, there's people like Tiger, the American rapper launching music on Opulus. And a lot of people hate music NFTs, just like they hated NFTs the first time around. People are saying music NFTs won't work. This is a dead industry. That is the exact kind of hater mentality and fuel for the fire you need for an absolutely face melting rally. So I do believe that will come. You can get things like shares in your favorite artist. You can own a part of their royalties. So if they stream a ton on Spotify, you'd actually get a kickback from that. They do things such as exclusive events and perks for your favorite bands or artists, etc. And I think this is a cool way for people to interact with the music industry more widely. And of course, it does help support some of the smaller artists that launch their works on here. Founders behind this one own Ditto, which is a UK music label, a very big one indeed. And I do actually have high hopes that some of the tokens I have remaining from Opulus will actually do very well during this next cycle as well. And it's on the radar in terms of a music NFT investment to add to during this next cycle if the hype really picks up. So overall, what we can see here is there's risks and rewards with everything in crypto, but no more so than the IDO space where the risks and the rewards are amplified by a large percentage, as you can see on screen there. This is why with my kind of barbell investment strategy, I keep a large proportion of my wealth in Bitcoin and ETH, but on the flip side to that, you take further risks out on the risk curve and invest in a top-notch launchpad out there, which I believe is TrustSwap here. If we go over to the chart, what you can see from this, 18 cents only, $18 million market cap, it is back down to the real buy the dip levels. As you can see, there were three launches in Q1 of 2023. The price went from like 15, 16, 17 cents up to over 50 cents with that. And if you just think about it, there's not that many consumers through the door at this point in time. When the bull market comes and a lot more people enter into the space, this little FOMO rally will become a much larger FOMO rally. So I am actually actively buying the dip on this one right now because it is pretty much double bottomed back to its early January prices. And I know what is going to come for this one. I played this game last time round and I'm going to do a lot better this time round. So if you do manage to buy some of these tokens, if you wish to get involved, you can buy them on the leading DEXs across various blockchains. Any of these chains here, Polygon, ETH, Avalanche, or Binance, get your tokens on one of them. You then come to the long-term staking portal. Link for this down in the description below come to new stake, have your wallet connected with those tokens on them, decide how many of those tokens you therefore wish to stake. So you've got 4,000 tokens and then move the slider on the left-hand side, how long you're gonna lock them for. That will determine the booster to your multiplier here. So to get that 10X, you need to stake them for a five-year period. At that point, they are determined in my book as a purchase. You don't have to worry about these tokens ever again. You've made the purchase to get your access to the launch pads. You will get some non-inflationary staking rewards from that in the tune of like 5% there, but this will guarantee you huge access to the launch pads as they come in during this next bull cycle. And as we can see, this can yield some ridiculous returns. None of this is financial advice, just sharing with you some of the things I've been involved with here and how they work. And why I think this is a very good allocation to make due to the fact you can make crazy returns in very short periods of time. So I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Drop me a comment down below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.